Hi everyone, CJ Dore here from the shareprices.com.au studios. Well, as promised, we're back with our Aussie Stocks White House Special Edition. Now in this insight, what we're gonna do is have a look at Aussie stocks and sectors and see how they've performed since November 9 when Trump was elected. Let's have a look and see how things have traveled. Starting with financials and our big four banks. So let's get underway with CBA, the biggest of the big four banks and the biggest stock on the ASX. Let's have a look at these columns along the top. November 9 is the day that Trump was elected, and that's November 9, our time, or November 8th in the States. And CBA was at $70.89, then moved up to a high of $85.26. Key date is that high was January 9. Let's keep that in mind as we move forward. Now the gains up until that point were 20.2%. Then we had a date of January 18. So the close of play on January 18 is where we're gonna take it up to and have a look at where things went until then. Closed off at 82.66. So from the high of January 9 through until January 18, it was a fallback of 3%, just over 3%. So it has turned the corner somewhat. Let's see if we can find some trends with the big four banks. Moving on to NAB. On election day, they were at 25.79, then moved up to a high 32, just over 32.06. January 9, that number again, turned the corner. That seems to be the max at the moment for the banks. 24.3% was the increase in share price for NAB since election day with Trump, moving up to $30, and that was where it's pulled back to, or a loss of around just over 4.5% since the high on January 9. So let's move forward now with ANZ. Let's have a look at the numbers. 25.4 is where the share price was on election day, then moved up to a high, 31.77. Key date once more, January 9, that's three from three. And that is when it maxed out and started to turn the corner and come back a little. But what were the gains up to that point? Over 26%. So the biggest gain so far of the three big four banks then fell away to the close of play January 18, just over $30 or what is a pullback or loss into the red of just over 5%. So let's have a look finally with Westpac and we've got some interesting numbers here. 28.41 on election day up to just under $34 and guess what? Four from four. January 9 was the day that Westpac maxed out and reached its high since Trump was elected. So key date there, January 9. Let's have a look at the figure. 19.5% was the rise up until that point. Then we had the close of play on January 18 into the 3240s and that is a pullback or loss into the red of around 4%. So the gains are very similar. The date of the high is exactly the same, January 9, and then the pullback so far into the red. Small numbers, but similar, three, four, five, and in the four range. So that is our big four banks. Moving on to the resources sector, and let's have a look at some of our big miners you know the names of, and you might hold some of these. Let's go to BHP. They're built very well back from that $14 range you remember last year. 22.56 was where they were at on November 9 when Trump was elected, then up to a high 26.77. January 16 was the high, so they're starting to move back a little in their rally. That was again a 15.7%. Close of play January 18 into the 26.5 range, or what is almost a pullback into the red of 1%. So that is starting to set the scene for the miners as opposed to the big four banks. The gains aren't as big, but the fallback's not as big so far. Let's have a look at Rio. So $53 range when Trump was elected November 9, gained about 10 bucks into the 63s up until January 16. Look at that. Same again with the miners, January 16, that's two from two. The banks were four from four with January 9. Now we've got January 16 maxed out, just over 17, 17.5% 17 was the gain up to that point. Then back into the 63s, just under similar to the high or very marginal into the red figures there. It's just 0.1%, however, it has come back. So um, some signs that it is starting to come away, but a lot safer, a little bit more conservative than the bank so far. So looking good for the resources to hold things up a little. Let's have a look at Fortescue, slightly different, all iron ore, $5.40 range when Trump was elected, jumped up well over a dollar there into the 680s. They had a high uh, a little bit earlier, it finished for Fortescue, uh, it was last year, December 12. But look at the gains, 25% for them, the highest of all the gains, but also the biggest of the losses when it's pulled back right down to 610. So the gains are similar sort of territory with the banks, but the pullback is a little bit less. So let's have a look at the gains, 15, 17, 25, and the pullback since their highs in January and December of very marginal, just 0.1s in here. And then uh, the biggest was Fortescue. So the biggest gain and the biggest loss was Fortescue. Let's have a look at a, a little assortment of some of the blue chips, Telco, starting with Telstra. So a key figure for Telstra right throughout last year was $5. When was it gonna go through? and it did and when it goes through and the last time it went through five dollars was a long long time ago many years ago 
Now we thought, is it gonna come back? But it looks like the Trump rally has pulled it back and it got to a high of 528, January 9, once again, that key date. The big players seem to be holding on to that date. But look at the gain, 9%, really good for Telstra. That doesn't move dramatically, but in that short period of time, 9% is a good gain. But it has fallen away and is heading towards that key $5 mark again. 5.17, close of play, January 18, and the fallback is 2% in the red. So not too dramatic so far. But with all of the banks and all the resources and all of these blue chips, or this one so far, we are turning the corner and starting to go red as we move towards our Trump presidency. Let's have a look at CSL, 97.15 upon election, up to a high of 104 flat. Again, January 9, key date. The big players seem to all turn the corner at that same time. The game was just over 7%. It's come back under the ton. It's in the 99 range now, or what is a fallback? Close of play yesterday to 4%. So nothing has had a bigger fall than a rise out of all of these so far. So these guys are holding on pretty strong so far. Defensive stock, let's have a look at Woolworths. 22.73, the day Trump was elected, up to 24 and a half almost. Again, January 16, similar territory, just a bit further back than that key January 9 date. Just over 7.5% was the gain up until that high January 16. 24 range is where we finished off on uh, January 18, yesterday, close of play. But the loss is marginal, not even 1%, just 0.6.7. So good news for Tel uh, Telstra so far, just a marginal fall. CSL, about the same. And rounding these guys out here with the uh, uh, retail is Woolworths. Let's have a look at one more with West Farmers. And we've got a $40 range there upon Trump being elected up to the 4280. December uh, 29 is when they carried out their rally to. So finished a little earlier than the rest of them. 5% was the gain, quite conservative. Not big falls, but certainly not um, big, lo uh, big losses or gains. 4160 is where it came back to, or what is around that 2.8 in the red. So these guys in that um, retail area or uh, consumer staples um, have been a little bit stronger as far as that fallback goes. So let's have a look at resources. Now, this is really interesting as compared to the rest, and it is gonna sum the market up and show which way it has been moving. Let's have a look at our exclusive gold producers. Newcrest Mining, 25.35, let's go to the high. Same again, 25.35. So the first example we've seen, the day Trump was elected, things fell backwards immediately since then. That's as high as it's been. It's never gotten any higher. So gold so far, the first one to turn around and go in the other direction. And it kind of suits the way that the market does work. When it is strong, gold falls away. Or when the market falls away, gold can be a bit of a safety blanket and start to pick up. So let's have a look and see how it's traveled. Went down to a low, 1675, December 16. Just on a third, it lost. So let's have a look at where it finished up yesterday, 22. So some gain. So it's starting to work in the opposite to the rest of the market. Let's move on, have a look at Evolution Mining. $2.55 on election day. What about the high? Same again, $2.55. So there's two from two. The election day when Trump was elected is the highest this got up until now, then immediately started to fall away. How badly? Well, down to 161. Again, look at the key date. Same as the banks, the same day so far. December 16 is when, luckily, it has turned the corner and come back up, but they lost even more, 36% down to that lowest low in the 161. Close of play yesterday, got back to $2.25. So these guys so far have been the only ones turned and gone back up the other way. So if things are on the move, maybe they'll meet when Trump starts to uh, come into play as of next Monday morning. Let's have a look finally at uh, St. Barbara, and we've got $2.95. What about the high? Same again, $2.95. And what about the date? Almost identical. That was actually a weekend in between those. So that was the Monday, December 19. They got to a low of 177, but the biggest loss of all of them is 40% from the day it was elected, which was also the high, down to its lowest low. However, it has come back a little 235. So the biggest losses have been in gold, which does make sense in regard to the way the market moves. The market is generally on the way up, which we have seen with all of those other big stocks like the banks, gold will come off, exactly what's happened. Now that the other banks have, and banks and um, other big blue chip stocks have started to turn the corner, it's gold that's on the rise. So this could be a safety stock going forward with some uncertainty with the new Trump presidency. And there we go, let's have a look at the key feature. The high was also the election day, then it started to fall away. And that is our Aussie Stocks White House Special Edition. So I hope you enjoyed that. Some really interesting numbers. And I hope that helps for you to try and get a handle on where your portfolio is going to go 
or maybe some decision making moving forward. But get in touch with us at info at shareprices.com.au if you want any more information. If you want to have a look, just go back, replay, watch it again. It makes for really interesting reading. From the shareprices.com.au studios, I'm CJ Dor with another Market Insight. Talk to you again soon and we will be doing another special edition the week after Trump goes into the White House. Let's have a look and see if gold starts to come back and the other blue chips are starting to fall away. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.